Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we are doing our lesson free in polynomials. So we have if p of x is divisible by q of x, then every zero of q of x is a zero of p of x for polynomials p and q. This is true be they in whatever sort of field they be, be they polynomials over complex numbers, real numbers, rationals, or integers where we will most often use them, though not always, as is the case here. Because divisibility, mind you, of polynomials is polynomial P is divisible by polynomial Q if there exists a unique polynomial C such that P is equal to Q times C. In other words, for the unique representation of P and Q as Q times C plus R, where the degree of R is less than the degree of Q, if R is equal to zero in this unique representation, and we've proved there exists a unique representation in general for any P and Q, then we have that from here. If R is zero, then Q divides P. That's what it means for one polynomial to divide another. It can have all sorts of coefficients. So here we're asking in general, for which n is it true that this x to the n minus x, actually x to the n plus x minus one is divisible by x squared minus x plus one. Here I invite you to pause for five minutes and most 25 because I'm trying to teach you here another way of solving these problems. And here's the idea. So the zeros here are like this dividing this means that the zeros of this polynomial are going to be equal to the zero, zeros or this, of this one. That's what that means. So what do we need to have? We need to have that for a squared equal to a minus one. That's what these zeros hold. These, there, there are two such zeros. The zeros are actually a is equal to, uh, it's going to be one plus or minus a b, or a one plus or minus i square roots of three over two. Now, for me, when I first saw this, this is scary to me. Complex numbers, like how do I work with them? But here's the thing, I'm gonna take it step by step. Just keep in mind, it matters that the zeros of this one are zeros of this one. That's what's necessary and sufficient for here for this divisibility. So now how do we do this? So we have these two different zeros, a and b, and we also need to have a n plus a minus one needs to be equal to zero if the problem statement is true. Now what is a minus one? Well, that is a squared. So we need to have a n plus a squared needs to be zero. Okay. Now, given a squared isn't equal to zero, and we can even check this out, because otherwise a would be equal to one, this is not the case. We now know that this means that a to the n minus two needs to be equal to minus one. Now, my question for you is, if a is a complex number such that this is true, for which n is a to the n minus two equal to negative one? Pause for five minutes and figure that out. And here's the idea. So this equation is not the best to work with. There are two ways we can actually modify this equation. One is to like, let's see when we get a minus one. So let's multiply both sides by a, and we get that a cubed is a squared minus a. Now, what does a squared minus say? Well, when we move a to the other side, we know this is going to leave minus one on this side. So a cubed is minus one. And also this means that a to the power of four is going to equal minus a, a to the power of five is going to equal to minus a squared. And then a to the power of sixth is minus a to the power of third, which is equal to one. So this has a period of six and it's minus one when n minus two then is going to give us a remainder of three when divided by six. So n minus two is congruent to three modulo six. In other words, n is congruent to five modulo six. So for n congruent to five modulo six, this thing right here is going to be zero for both of these roots for both a and b, and ergo, 
this polynomial is going to be divisible by this one. And this finishes up the problem. This is how we prove divisibility now. It's one way actually of proving divisibility, a way that is sometimes used in problems, and now you know of it. Next time we're going to look at Vieta's rules, and as always, thanks for problem solving.